All right, it's IG again with another Linux app review, and today I'm finally looking at GIMP 2.8. Alright, so the GNU Image Manipulation Program, better known as GIMP, has, uh, has been an open source uh, flagship for quite some time. Uh, GIMP has had a long history of providing a photo editor and image manipulator uh, that was not quite comparable to Photoshop, but still it tried its best. And uh, to be honest, this is what I started using uh, long before I was introduced to Photoshop, simply because Photoshop is expensive. And, uh, and from that point of view, GIMP does an amazing job. Uh, but here we are with GIMP 2.8 and it's actually the first stable release in quite some years since 2.6 went stable. Uh, the biggest news of course which has, uh, which has GIMP users all over the world rejoicing, that is the single window mode. Now you can see here I've got the multiple window mode, and a lot of people have had a gripe about this in the past. Uh, as, as I started using GIMP when it looked like this and I wasn't too uh, well acquainted with Photoshop, uh, it didn't bother me that much. But now that I do have the option uh, here under Windows, you can go to single window mode and it lumps it all into one window, which is very convenient in the long run. So actually what I'm going to do today is, uh, is uh, have a look at this application, but of course GIMP is such a vast program that it's going to be impossible for me to go into every single little detail. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to show you also a little bit of behind the scenes of uh, how I make the video thumbnails for my channel as well. So um, basically we'll just, we'll just run through what I usually do as my uh, normal process and you can see here uh, I'll just pull in two of my uh, screenshots that I've downloaded for the web for both Magia and Rosa 2012. The other good news is with uh, GIMP 2.8 is that you can actually group layers now as opposed to just uh, having them by themselves, which can also be a great help if you've got uh, certain items grouped together in a predefined scene that you want to still be able to move around as one unit. Uh, so I'm going to create a new template and I usually create it at 1280 by 720 because that is the resolution that's the highest resolution you can get with the thumbnails. So you can see here that when you have multiple projects open, they tab up the top here, which is also very nice indeed. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag these layers over uh, into my other project, like so. And then I can resize them and do whatever I need to do with them. So what I think I might do is I'll have that in the corner there, maybe give them a bit of a reflection. So we'll go Rosa 2012, We'll duplicate it. This is where the HUD comes in handy. It's because you can have two, uh, two layers exactly the same. So then I'm going to rotate this one around like such. Just do it the full 180 degrees. And then we'll grab the flip tool, which is here somewhere. There we go. Flip that around, drag it back down under here. And then fade out the opacity a bit. Now also I think the background would do better off as a black background, so we'll select a background layer, grab the paint bucket tool, fill in the black background there, it's a bit easier on the eyes. And then I think what we also might do is put a bit of a highlighting border around the uh, around each screenshot, so we shall, and maybe we'll grab the paintbrush, there we go, just blurs out the line a bit. Alright, so now we've got the Magia layer, and I think what we might do is rotate it around like such and then we might scale him up a bit there we go and then again we might group all of these layers together dragging them all into the layer group and then set the opacity of the whole entire layer group down a bit so that I can make way for the text so then simply grab the text tool enter our text Drag it outside the layer group so it doesn't have the opacity problems. And then we're free to drag it and move it around. Then we can grab the highlighter tool which is a simple type with the HUD menu again. So we shall do a drop shadow. Okay, repeat and repeat just to give it a bit more density and darkness. And then what we might do is group all of these together. Might merge the layer group there so I can move all of the text at the one time. And then I shall pull in my logo. Here we are. Zoom out and we've finished our thumbnail more or less. 
And now we can just simply export it or save as gia.png. And there we have it. All right, so as you can see, GIMP 2.8 is quite a pleasure to use. Uh, it's a very powerful program. You can really go to town on this as far as a graphics developer or anything of that sort is concerned. Um, it's a very, it, it's still a very worthy opponent to Photoshop. It's definitely the best you can find out there without spending a cent. Uh, so congratulations on the GIMP team for finally getting this out there. Uh, again, the, the, the simple demonstration that I did is, is only a drop in the bucket compared to where this program can take you. So definitely if you want to take some time to get to know this, then I definitely check out their website. They've got links to manuals and all that fun stuff. But as far as my opinion is concerned, it's a very worthy upgrade from 2.6. Uh, so I definitely recommend it. That'll be all from me, and I shall see you guys in the very near future with Fedora 17 review. Feel free to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff if you like this content on a regular basis, and I shall see you in the very near future. Peace out, everybody.